Hello again. Now, Howard University researchers say the stability of the state in South Africa is at risk. This warning comes as that U.S. ambassador in Pretoria had dropped a bombshell about South Africa allegedly supplying Russia with weapons. Many believe this will have a devastating effect on diplomatic relations and the country's economy. Now, the latest on the saga is that international relations has now summoned the U.S. ambassador in Pretoria. The National Conventional Arms Control Committee has also confirmed that no weapon sales to Russia have been approved during this uh, period uh, in question. Now, I'm joined by Pio Gutlemyandu from Howard University's African Studies Department. And also joining us in Johannesburg is Professor Spamanda Zondi from the University of Johannesburg's Institute for Pan-African Thought and Conversation. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to today, and thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, Pio Gutle and Spamanda, before we explore some of what I've read in a very short report, Pio Gutle, about uh, what you've authored in terms of uh, the, the, the troubling economic and political trajectory that South Africa finds itself in that could risk the stability of the state. I just want to get from each of you just a quick sense about this latest story that we are grappling with in South Africa that involves the United States and, 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 and Russia, of course, and all these allegations. Uh, Spamante, can I start with you, Prof? Oh, oh yes. Um, it is the, uh, this signals that the relationship between South Africa and the United States at government level uh, may have soured for, for some reason. It's not very obvious what the reason could be, except to take note of the fact that over the past uh, 15 months or so, um, a number of very senior uh, government officials from the United States government have visited South Africa. Uh, in only two occasions, it appeared that they were visiting to persuade South Africa to join the U.S. bloc against uh, Russia. And, and remove itself from non-alignment with other sides. And the, the, the attempt to pressure South Africa was so huge that it seemed as if the United States uh, regarded South Africa's position on this matter as very important to invest so much in it. We can only assume that it is failure uh, to persuade South Africa through diplomatic channels that the United States ambassador has then decided to take this very unusual step uh, to go to a host, press, hold a press conference, like hold a, a, a loud mic and shout at a, at a host. Um, um, it, it's just very unusual. Mm -hmm. uh, it can only be done in the view of the United States behavior. It can only be done when the United States is trying to signal something to South Africa or push it in a, in a particular direction, after the more cordial, more disciplined, more civilized way of changing South Africa's position, okay. they have failed. Okay, let, let, let's bring you in the pure good. From the U.S. side, I mean, you're in Howard University. Uh, what are you picking up about this particular uh, story currently? Very briefly, before we delve into the main discussion. It's a combustible situation. I concur with Professor Zondi. Uh, I think cooler heads will have to be summoned in in, in Twine. I would even uh, quickly, uh, you know, uh, advise the South African government to bring someone like a Tabo Mbeki, who has a long history of dealing with the American, the, the Americans and different administrations, to so basically bring in experience because this is a very, very de de delicate uh, situation the country finds itself. Okay, thank you very much. Pio Gutle, in this report that I've, I've, I've read following your research there with your colleagues at Howard University, you say that South Africa is on a troubling economic and political trajectory which could risk the stability of the state. You mentioned a number of uh, different parts, like the state of our democracy, our economy, the inter-party factions within the governing, the governing ANC that creates a, a political conundrum, as you say. How risky currently, or how is our democracy in peril currently? Well, uh, firstly, I would like to uh, say thanks for the question. Uh, democracy does not fail suddenly. It, it follows a trajectory of decline. And this decline is, I think, Ernest Hemingway say, people, when someone gets broke, 
they go broke first. Uh, it, it's a de- it's a steady decline, and then sudden. It's gradual, then sudden. So there's been a gradual malaise in South Africa that has uh, basically undermined what I call the grand bargain that founded South Africa. Remember, South Africa is founded on a grand bargain. This bargain says we will perhaps uh, defer certain justice. Uh, matters. We will defer certain economic justice matters. In and in this bargain, we will seek. We will sue for peace. We will sue for economic growth. We will sue. We will, we will sue for a country that is quite able and is taken seriously in the world. Now, how you judge South Africa's current democracy and its potential? You judge it to the extent that it's able to deliver these first um, constellation of values I've mentioned that form part of the grand bargain of South Africa. So to the extent that the economy has stagnated, to the extent that um, the factions within the ruling party and or factionalism has not gotten better, depending on who you talk to, then it would be the extent uh, to to which we have been kind of, uh, we have taken a a much more guarded view on the the future of South Africa's democracy, not to be alarmist. Yeah, Spomante, I mean, uh, uh, we've spoken about this uh, quite, quite a bit with you now and again, Prof. We, we are living increasingly in a flawed democracy. That's the point that uh, uh, Pio Gushe is, is, is posturing here. We know the impact of state capture, the impact of patronage and, and corruption. Um, is our state uh, stable? Um, our state has never been stable. Uh, Our state has never been fully democratic. Uh, Our state has never been um, fully assured uh, and stuff. It's always been a work in progress. It has always been buffeted by winds from every side, from the Mandela days, um, the winds of division, winds of racism that led to Mandela appearing in court uh, when challenged by a, a racist organization. Um, and then, then had to be involved in the suit for war. To Mbeki days, where there was a, a big uh, issue around HIV AIDS and, and the handling of it and perhaps mishandling of it. Uh, to Zuma years and, and, and the, the, the question of political corruption uh, escalates. Uh, to current days, where then the economic challenges look a little bit more and more, more pronounced. Just unfortunate that the the, there was a COVID-19 that had a huge impact on the economies everywhere in the world, but it found a situation that was already dire. Our economy has always struggled. And now a democracy that cannot assure people a good quality of life by building a robust economy, um, a democracy that cannot uh, build systems of, of stability and, and good livelihood is always in peril. Yeah. So inequality, the right behind it, plus now corruption, um, poor management uh, of the state as well, all come together to imperil our democracy. It's, it's a problem. Yeah, and as, as Pio Gutle was saying, the governing party has been beset, as we all know, with, uh, with um, the factionalization of, of all sorts, factions of all sorts. Now, we are about a year or so, we don't know the date yet, of our general elections next year in 2024, in the 30th anniversary of democracy as dawn here in, 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 in our country. Uh, you argue, Pio Gushe, that uh, President Matamela Ramaphosa is finding himself in the middle of a political conundrum. When he came on, he came on with a Tumamina kind of positive message to say, we're going to fix corruption, we're going to do this. And then, as, uh, as Pamanja was saying now, as Prof Zondi was saying now, uh, our economy is, doing, is in a far worse state now. I mean, ESCOM has really given us big headaches here with its ongoing load shedding. Now, we're not far from the elections next year. What, what can be done? What do you think the governing party should focus on, Pio Gushe? Are there alternatives? If so, what could they be? Yes, um, the, the, the governing party should go back to its roots, I would say, and look at the, the, the found, what I call again, the founding bargain. South Africa was founded, founded on a bargain, post-1994 South Africa. And some of these, the, these simple understandings, uh, not 
big pronouncements and not big promises. Perhaps make five simple objectives based on these founding uh, principles or the, uh, of post-1994. And basically take the people of South Africa into its confidence on its failures and its challenges. This would basically actually serve two purposes. It will help the current president of the ANC to consolidate his power because he'll be able to abjure any criticism that may be forthcoming from within his party. And also it will build confidence in the West and in the East to people who are very much invested in South Africa succeeding. I think lost in this milestrome, this di di diplomatic milestrome, is this idea that Americans, the Europeans, the Asians, everyone in the world wants South Africa to succeed in the final analysis because South Africa is a quite a special country in the, in the um, uh, global uh, eco uh, community of nations. Yeah, Spamante, there's not a lot of time left between now and the elections next year. What, what would your view, view be about uh, what can help take this country to a better, uh, a, a slightly better maybe, uh, political stability? Um, I will have to build upon what Gedeza has just said, uh, shared right now. Um, we have a, a national development plan adopted in 2012. It really gives us a roadmap about what we should do as a country in order to assure ourselves a prosperous future. To me, we need to go back to implementing that which has been decided. It's not about cutting new plans. It's not about starting new initiatives. We need to be better, do better at leadership, at government, um, um, at um, implementing the things that are there. The, the biggest, for me, challenge and perhaps failure that has uh, been registered by the governing party is that it has not been able to implement a plan that the whole country accepted, that was embraced by everybody, business, uh, civil society, and all of them, and to, to implement it with decisiveness, to implement it with energy, to implement it with belief, and implement it with efficiency that it needed to do. There's a sense in which you, every, everybody went back to business as usual so that we would not be able to prevent a crisis that we find ourselves now. If we implemented the, the, the plan, we would have been fine. Just take an example. The plan says you need to significantly enhance the capacity of the state to plan, to lead, and to produce the results on the ground. That capacity at local the provincial and national level need to do it. Need professional people in the right places, strong leaders, consequence, consequences for, um, for underperformance. It needed a whole well-performing, capable state, and we have not been doing uh, that game. Uh, for example, the, 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 the plan talks about uh, 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 build a social compact where business, civil society, and government agree a specific program to implement this uh, a plan. When President Ramaphosa was elected, realized that and then promised uh, to drive that within the first 500 days, it didn't happen, we can debate that. But if we're able to build that social compact, South Africa is a very capable country, a lot of, capab lot of capabilities. We just need to create compact, lead collectively, lead strongly, coherently. Uh, and then the results will come. And unfortunately, we have not been able to do that. We need to do that mm. and try and do that. It's never late, uh, by the way. Even if we do whatever we are able to achieve in a period of 10 months, it will make a huge mm. difference, at least to be seen failing while trying rather than to fail to try. Yeah, I mean, South Africa has been pretty much a one-party dominant democracy. As you've pointed out, uh, Gedeza, in your, in your writing that I've read a part of, and that could lead to some level of authoritarianism as the ANC, the governing party, will seek to remain in power, in power next year. Uh, is there a, a real danger of authoritarianism living side by side with some kind of multi-party democracy in our country beyond 2024? Yes, uh, we labored um, with this point when we were writing our article, uh, but we're convinced about it. I call this zanification. 
when the ZANU PF in Zimbabwe wanted to hold on to power at all costs in 2008, uh, the, you could barely tell the difference between where ZANU begins and ends, where the state of Zimbabwe began and ended. This was very dangerous in the region. So in a region that has a lot of uh, one-party dominated systems, we must always then be looking to learn from negative effects of these one-party dominated systems. And it's too late to learn after the fact or uh, while you are dealing with the problem. So this is a call, this is a clarion call in this report that we must, with, even within the ANC, they must look out for this. What uh, Professor Zonde has mentioned, simple things like uh, deploying people that are competent, whether they are members of the ANC or not. This is, in this current environment, it's even revolutionary to even imagine it taking place. But it's important because it will buttress this idea that South Africa is still a country that is capable and it's not moving towards one party domination. So one party dominate need not necessarily happen by just one party winning again, um, uh, the election outright, but it can happen with one party encrusting itself unfairly in the uh, uh, apparatus of the state such that the state is unable to function without the party. Yeah, as we, as we conclude, Nondaba, let me give you the final word on this discussion. Um, Ramaphosa's political fortunes ahead of 2024. There's this pala pala farm thing that is still ab above him. We're still waiting for all of these reports to tell us exactly uh, what, what has happened. Uh, and and Ketesa, they're talking about the inter-party factions which have worsened. And you've mentioned the question of leadership. How would you describe currently Ramaphosa's political fortunes ahead of 2024? There are two dimensions to it. Um, Ramaphosa within the ANC, family in charge, actually even more in charge now uh, after the December um, elections, no serious challenge internally. Actually, there, there are no major frictions within the ANC now for the first time in a long time. There's no, there's not, there's not, there's no other faction. There's only the ones in power. There is no challenge to them. So factional is that division, intra-party things that were very dominant and, and during Zuma's presidency and in the second term of Mpegi, almost, almost disappeared. The ANC knows now, it seems that it's given known now, that Ramaphosa is the only saving candidate that they have that they can present to the country and can appeal across the world. They don't, they don't have another candidate than all of them. Now, the second part of that becomes about how then does President Ramaphosa uses this huge, huge goodwill. The, mm. the, the fact that he doesn't have to look over his shoulders within his party, but that he has a crossover appeal even outside the end. Uh, okay. No, 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 sorry, I have to cut you there. We've, we've run out of time, but I think we've got a gist of your response to that. Yeah. Thank you very much, Inundaba and Kedeza. I was speaking there to Piwegule Miyandu from Howard University's African Studies Department and Professor Spamandla Zondi from the University of Johannesburg's Institute for Pan-African Thought and Conversation about the state of South Africa's, uh, the stability rather of South Africa's state ahead of elections next year. Very interesting points there that they have shared.